First of all, I think we need to stop and think that it was 2020 when we get the Crown Act. We needed a law to say that people could not be discriminated against because of their hair, that just wearing their hair in its natural form, whatever it may be. Just the fact that we needed a law and California being the first to have something like this is a sad statement on where we are in America. It's also a positive statement in that the initiative was taken by individuals here in California and in the legislature and having a governor who understood the importance of having such a law to deal with this kind of discrimination. So in my view, it's just the start. I have heard stories, and it's happened to me as well, of black women in the workplace who were either uh, punished or somehow penalized because they were characterized as being aggressive or being threatening only because they spoke up and either took a position that uh, those receiving the information felt was threatening to them. And again, this is something that's not new. It's something we've had to deal with. So when I look at the Crown Act, it is a step and I think a major step in saying that and, and by the way, this law isn't just for black women, but it is because of the discrimination faced by black women that this law was even put forward. And it applies to anyone. So if there's a white person who has really long hair, and let's say it's a male, that person can't be discriminated against and told, well, you can't work here because your hair is long. Unless of course the hair is not, if they're working in a food industry and they haven't put their hair in a net and they refuse to do it, okay, that's a different issue. But it was because of the struggle of black women that we have this law on the books. It is my hope that the similar laws will be passed around the country because the issue is the same whether you're in California, Pennsylvania, or in Mississippi. Uh, these issues come up all of the time. So I, I'm glad that that exists. And I can tell you when I started off, when I as practicing as a lawyer, I had a big old Afro, big Afro. And I would go into courts where there were mostly white male judges. I didn't see any female judges of color, forget that. So that wasn't even in my world at the time. And I knew, I knew just by the attitude of the judges and the attorneys on the other side that um, I was not being taken seriously or I'd see frowns on their faces saying they just didn't approve because I didn't look like them. And that's really hard, particularly when you're starting out and trying to make a living working in the law. Um, so I can say when I got on the bench, um, I my hair changed quite a bit over the 20 years I was on the bench. And it changed because I could, because black women's hair is such that we can change our hair and do as we will with it. So I did it because I could, but I also did it because I wanted to bust stereotypes. When people walked into my courtroom and saw a black woman with little dreads or with a box and a fade, I'd get the looks, but I was also making a statement to them that yes, this is what judges look like. Get over it and understand that this it's a new day. Uh, so it's better today. Uh, I think that Black women in the legal profession are, are more able to be who they want to be, showing it in their hair, and can in California because we have a law that says that they are protected. All right, everyone, thank you for watching Asked and Answered. And if you like what you see, if you like this content, if you like all the series, please smash that like button, click subscribe.